Hello, this is James Cook, Assistant Professor of Social Science, and this is the last video lecture for uh, Social Networks, Communications, Sociology 375 at the University of Maine at Augusta. We've been through a lot of weeks together, beginning with the fundaments of social networks, thinking about social networks in politics and online circumstances, thinking about properties of nodes, thinking about properties of ties, thinking about properties of cliques, K-Cores and other groups, thinking about properties of the entire network, and finishing the semester by thinking about explaining events, explaining actions according to social network structure. That's the last project you're working on now, and I encourage you to read the associated text that's going along with this video part of the lecture for some practical uh, suggestions and reminders about what it is you need to do. This includes not only writing up your research paper, but also commenting on another person's research paper. It involves submitting a rough draft and then revising that rough draft so that you have a polished final product. As we finish up the semester, I'd like to offer a few final thoughts on really what makes social network analysis just so cool to study. Uh, one of those answers is intellectual. I've always found social networks to be interesting because they begin with an incredible simplicity. Uh, if you think about it, what is a social network? It's uh, a model in which there are only two kinds of things in the entire social world, nodes and ties. Everything else follows from these two kinds of objects in a social network. Uh, from that, from the arrangement of a large number of nodes with a large number of ties and varying sorts of structures, we can get all the complexity we see in any system of interaction. Practically, it's applicable to a number of fields of study and a number of fields of study that have uh, consequences to real life. In business, if you are interested in uh, generating new relationships, in using relationships, whether they be of strong ties or weak ties, uh, marketing and building relationships to consumers, uh, we've seen a number of ways in which people use the insights of social network analysis to do that. In biology, you can look at a website called cytoscape.org and this is a free open source piece of software that is used by biologists to study the interactions between genes and the interactions between proteins in creating all kinds of biological processes. Uh, in epidemiology, people have used social network analysis in order to study the dynamics of disease outbreaks. We've uh, made a reference to uh, the work of Fowler and Christakis at Harvard University and successfully predicting uh, the outbreak of an H1N1 uh, 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 a virus at Harvard University among students two weeks in advance uh, compared to normal methods. We can go back further in time and uh, think about the AIDS crisis in the 1980s. If you read a book called And the Band Played On, a rather thick book which is a history of the early AIDS epidemic, one of the most interesting passages in that book has to do with finding patient zero. One Gaetan Dugas. How did they do that? They did that through snowball sampling, a social network analytic technique. Uh, epidemiologists, once they found uh, patient zero, were able to understand how the AIDS virus spread with a, a much higher uh, degree of uh, knowledge. In the intelligence community, the CIA, uh, military intelligence have used social network analysis to catch terrorists, to understand who is involved with terrorist groups, to understand which groups are associated with terrorist organizations, and even to find uh, individuals like Saddam Hussein. In literature, uh, the idea of relationships between words, between concepts, between characters in a play uh, have, to an increasing extent, relied upon social network analysis for a formal evaluation. 
These are all practical applications. And you can see that professionally speaking, then, the ability to understand a social network uh, analysis and eventually the ability to produce a piece of social network analysis is quite useful, especially in this era of big data in which it is easy to obtain a large volume of information about people and their activities and what they do. And the challenge is figuring out exactly how to understand that information and use it. You have some understanding in that that you may not have had at the beginning of the semester. Uh, finally, before you graduate, you may be asking yourself, where do you go from here? Now that the semester is over, now that you've successfully completed this course in social network analysis at the 300 level as a sociology or communications course, what can you do next? The uh, positive answer is that there is uh, somewhere for you to go that is taking it up a level to the 400 level, and that's a class in communications sociology at the University of Maine at Augusta, uh, ComSoc 475. And that course is called Analyzing Social Media. If you think we were really applied and focused on social networks in this course, well, just wait. In ComSoc 475, which will first be taught in the fall of 2013, we will be applying a laser-like focus at online social networks. Uh, particularly those social networks which are called social media in which people can talk back and forth, uh, interact in one way or another with one another. We will uh, dive down and, and figure out what are the metrics, the things that we want to measure about online social media, what are the outcomes that are most important, and how can you start to build a professional presence in social media, uh, both as a user uh, and as an analyst, so that when you graduate, uh, you have a marketable skill. ComSoc 375 and ComSoc 475 are part of a 10 uh, course certificate at the University of Maine at Augusta, the Social Media Certificate. This certificate is something that you can obtain along with your current uh, major, whether you are a liberal studies major, a mental health and human services major, you'll find that five out of the ten courses in the social media certificate actually overlap with your major requirements. If you're a social science major, you'll find that six out of the ten courses in the social media certificate also count towards your BA in social sciences. And this is applicable for a number of other uh, majors as well. While you're getting your major, Consider getting this professional certificate, adding it at no extra cost while you're a student uh, to your diploma so that you can then go out into the professional world and show that you not only have a general understanding of some field, but you have the particular ability to carry that out.